so I wanted to have you on because I wanted to hear your testimony. Um, every time I see you in church, you are always on fire for God. There is never a time I don't look down there. You're not at the altar praising, giving your everything. So I wanted to hear your testimony. I wanted to bring you in and, um, you know, understand if, did you grow up in church? Did you grow up here in Bakersfield? Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I was born here in Bakersfield. My, um, doing the little research I did, I'm like sixth or seventh generation for sure in this wonderful truth. But, uh, I know for sure sixth, but my grandpa even says, Oh, it could go farther than that. So, uh, my mom and dad were really into church. Um, and 36 and 0 in Brother Terry's church. And then uh, when I was about five, four or five, they split up, got a divorce, and sadly, church, you know, stopped too. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's just uh, not a good situation. But yeah. uh, I have an older brother, and so he didn't go to church either anymore. But Thank God for, you know, faithful family members who did go. Like my my grandparents on my dad's side always came. My mom's dad, he's still here. Um, and so just being around them kept me yeah. going in church and or kept me in that atmosphere yeah. when I'd go around their houses and stuff. And so um, and that's just a little side note. Like, thank God for, for grandparents and, um, you know, aunts and uncles who pray for you and, and instill this truth. Even if you're not going, they're putting something in you. Like I remember uh, a lot of older people will know my great grandpa, Ray Dixon, he's passed away, but he, I remember being at his house and he'd just be sitting in his rocking chair and just speaking in tongues. And I remember going up to him, I was like probably like six or seven. And I was like, grandpa, how do you do that Indian talk? I thought he was doing like, you know, native (laughs) American Indian. And and then it was, uh, he was just speaking in tongues and he was just, he just laugh, ha ha ha, you know, and he didn't ever answered me. And so years <laughs> later, I realized yeah. he was just full of the Holy ghost, yeah. just out of like the blink of a hat, you know? And so I just, um, were you already out of church at that time? No, no, I was still, still out. I mean, I would come here with my grandparents every once in a while they bring me. Yeah. Um, but I, I, um, yeah, I wasn't in a church. My mom and dad weren't going to church. They fell out. My dad just got consumed with work. My mom, she, you know, other things happened. I mean, they weren't out like drinking and like doing drugs or nothing, but just distractions. It just, yeah. I don't know if just being divorced, they were just embarrassed or didn't want to come back or something, but my dad and mom are starting to come back now. And so I just, maybe God's using me as a way to pull yeah. them back in like full yeah. circle, like a loop. <laughs> yeah. How's he yeah, looping back in? That's good. So, but, uh, yeah, pretty much, um, you said your grandpa is still here. Well, uh, so my grandpa Hanford Underwood mm-hmm. and my grandma Shirley they um, they moved to Texas, but they've been they were one of the first families who came to I H Terry's church when he mm-hmm. opened one way back yeah. in the day. Um, the Condrens, I'm related to them through you know aunts and uncles and all that yeah. stuff. So really deep roots in it. Yeah. Uh, but my mom's dad, Dave Powell, comes here and he's oh, my okay. grandpa. So when I when high school rolled around. And I started coming back to church. Uh, he was always here, and he having someone to kind of click up with was really good, yeah. you know. So you had mentioned before, um, off off uh, offline, that you had went to thirty six and zero. Was that correct? When I was At, like when little, 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 and then what, uh, they were building this building. Okay. And then when my parents split, that's when they moved here to this build. The church moved here, and I didn't come here anymore, you know, because my yeah. parents had split. But yeah, being a little kid, I was like, you know, three or four at 36 and L. So you were growing up there. Yeah. Yeah. I remember faintly remember sleeping like under pews. Yeah. And so, and hearing the music and just being able to just clunk out, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's so. a lot of people with that testimony of just growing up. I did the same, same thing for me. I didn't grow up here at this church. I grew up at, at a, a different church here in town and then started coming here when I was probably six or seven something like that. So I was never at the 36 and 0 and I've never seen it um, myself. But. It's cool. I mean, it's not just down, down the road. It's cool to kind of drive by. Like yeah. sometimes when my grandpa's visiting from Texas, we'll hop in the truck and he'll say, oh, this is where I used to live. And this was the old church and the church before that. And yeah, <laughs> so it's cool. Yeah. So when, when you were no longer in church, you said you got back in church when you were in around high school. Well, um, to go back a little bit, when I was 13, I was starting to come uh, my grandparents screaming me and I wanted to get baptized. I just, I feel like God always had a tug on me and I always had a sensitiveness to mm-hmm. him. And, uh, 
like I just loved the things of God when I was a kid. I thought it was cool. I always prayed over my meals, even in elementary school. Like even to this day, I always make sure we pray over our food, no mm -hmm. matter where we're at. Um, just little things like that, that my grandparents had instilled in me. And so I got baptized. Uh, Pastor Bradford actually baptized me. I was 13. And, um, but then not having someone to consistently take me, mm -hmm. you know, you fell out of it. But when high school rolled around and I could drive myself, I started coming back to church um, and God would do like amazing moves on me and I would try to get past it. But unfortunately, the group I'm hanging around with, they, you know, you try to tell them what's going yeah. on and they don't know. Like the first time I got the Holy Ghost, I was in Kerrville, Texas at uh, Brother Tim Delano's church. Amazing man of God, super awesome. And uh, he took it over from another pastor. But I got the Holy Ghost. And I remember coming back and I was 16. I was telling all my friends, they're like, oh, you're crazy, man. They put something in the water and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, it's not. I'm telling you, I know what I felt. And so, but not having that reinforcement. Yeah. I just, you fall out and I, you know, was doing marijuana and drinking and chasing girls and all the stuff that the world calls normal, but yeah. it's not, it's just sin. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I, I was in a band, I had a mohawk, like, <laughs> like really tall. I mean, I got, I ended up getting tattoos. Like my brother, yeah. I love people to know that I have some tattoos. My, uh, my brother was super into it. You know, you want to be like your brother yeah, yeah. and his friends and stuff. So, but when I started coming towards the end of high school, shaved the mohawk, got rid of all that stuff. God was really working on me. And that's around the time I, you know, I met my, uh, well, I was working out of town a lot. My dad works out of town with yeah. his company. So I, I started missing church a lot. So I kind of fell out. Yeah. But um, we have a ranch in Texas. And so when I'd go out there, uh, there's all kinds of hills and mountains. So I would establish like a prayer life. I'd go up on the mountain, I'd pray. And so I was trying to keep that. And then once work kind of cooled down, I started coming back to town. I would start coming to church again. Yeah. And that's when I met my wife. Uh, and I actually took her to church. And she was like, wow, this is like, she kind of, she grew up in church and she knows what speaking in tongues yeah. and all that. But when we came here and people were running the lab, she was like, whoa, what is this place? You know, this <laughs> yeah, is like yeah. another level. Yeah. But she wasn't scared or nothing. So, uh, and she actually, I remember her uh, praying through the Holy Ghost and I was just like, man, this is awesome. And I was, I was praying to God. I was like, you know, God, if, she, cause she told me she'd been baptized in the titles where mm -hmm. they do the titles and the name. Yeah. And I was saying, God, if she needs to be baptized again in Jesus' name, like, just put it on her heart. And like two weeks later, she's like, I want to be rebaptized. I was like, I'll be rebaptized with you because I want, I understood yeah. more of what it meant to be baptized in Jesus' name, like the cleansing and, and yeah. what he did for us. And so got baptized. We were coming to church, doing good. And then uh, I was kind of working out of town and stuff, but we were coming. And then I just, um, this huge anxiety attack just started happening on me. And I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to leave the house quit going to church. It was just like, so just crushing me. I mean, uh, and then I ended up spending a lot of time in Texas and I got to, um, my grandparents, we drive to Kerrville, which is like two hours from the ranch and we'd go to church there and God would keep working on me, moving on me. But yeah, just the anxiety yeah. was just really overwhelming and it, it, it took me away. Yeah. I want to back up a little bit when, you know, you said when you were in high school and you started driving, you felt to go to church. What was driving you to go to church at that point? Cause you had been out for a bit. You hadn't had that foundation a lot once you know your parents got divorced and the years started passing by when you were able to make that decision and go, what do you think was driving you there? Um, <clears throat> believe it or not, my great grandfather who I talked about earlier, who spoke in tongues all the time, yeah. he, uh, couldn't really drive anymore. So I would, he'd ask if I could take him to church. And so he wouldn't come back to this church because some other stuff happened, but he wanted to go. We went to like Mike Mullen's church mm. and some other ones. And uh, man, the Holy Ghost would just fall. I'll, I'll never forget. I was sitting there just at the altar, just praying in the Holy Ghost, just tears rolling down. And I remember feeling something touch my face and I opened it and he had the biggest smile and he was like drying my tears for me. And it was just like little things like that, I think was just, just him be God using him to bring me back yes. in. And then I would have there. And then I started coming here, uh, because you know, this is just home. There's always something about, you know, home church, yeah. you know, where you grew up where you, your family's here, people know you. And like, 
brother Frost, you know, Bishop's known me my whole life. Yeah. So, and, um, it's good to have yeah. that family, that connection. Oh, to no, keep you bond, nothing bond like it. I mean, yeah. for people who don't have that family, which I mean, I have a lot of family here and I have a good family at home, but for people who don't like the church family is there besides your real family, there's nothing better than a church family. Yeah. And honestly, sometimes the church family is better than your family. I mean, <laughs> I, my stepbrother, I invite him to church all the time. And he says, your, your church has the nicest people I've ever met. And that's what we should be known yes. for. Like be Christ-like. Yes. Yeah. And, and pastors pushing that a lot of, of coming together as the church family, um, being a part of all of our lives. Cause that's what we want to do. And that's really important to keep together, um, as a church family. And that's amazing. Your, your church roots in your family, I believe it always stuck with you. Oh, yeah. And God was, as long as you don't let go, God's not going to let go. Well, and just like um, last week's episode where Jordan was talking about train up your children in the Lord, you know, Proverbs. I believe that so strongly because I remember uh, Bishop preached a message not too long ago about, you know, raising your kids up and uh, they'll never depart from it. And then people were like, well, if you leave, then uh, they can leave the church and backslide. Yeah, but it never leaves them. So how can you leave something that's truly inside of you? And that was my case. And I'm so blessed and thankful that even if it's just a little bit of God's word in you, it's going to stick with you. It'll never go away because God's word never comes back void. So if it's in you, it's in you. Yeah. As long as, like I said, as long as you don't let go, God's going to keep pulling you. He's going to keep tugging at you. Oh, yeah. And I believe all those little things that had happened um, and kept you in. Um, but that's exciting. And now you and your wife have a daughter. Yes. And yes, that's really do. exciting. Um, now that you have a daughter, what d- things are you doing differently or have you noticed that you're doing differently to keep that foundation for her? Honestly, um, like you stated at the beginning, just giving my all the praise and worship uh, – to just back up a little bit, because it's going to tie in with it. Um, yeah. So when I was dealing with all the anxiety and not coming to church, I remember just feeling this uh, condemnation, like I'm like not going to make it. And I think God was really working on me. And I called uh, Pastor Delano in Texas and I was like, hey, I'm really going through this stuff. I can't seem to get focused. I'm reading. I'm having all these thoughts go through my mind. And he told me about a message he just preached. He's like, you need to listen to this message. So it got put off for a couple of weeks. And during those two weeks it got put off, I was working with uh, my uncle Steve who comes to church here. And he was showing me, uh, we listen to messages while we drive. And he goes, Hey, I got this message from brother uh, Matthew Tuttle. It's called Die Hard Fan. You need to listen to it. So I put it on and we're driving, I'm listening to it. And man, it lit something in me. And I was like, I need, I need to get with it. And then I listened to his message that brother Delano told me to listen to. And it was talking about being a servant and what it truly means. And man, it's like something clicked in me like never before. And so I just started really like it. We're meant to praise and worship and give God our all. Yeah. And then it's like Brother Phillips said, a, you know, a few months ago, like God's always greater. So you need to give him your best every time. He's always getting better. So you need to be better. And so I don't ever want to lack in that. Yeah. And so having a daughter, I just want her to see how you should praise and worship God and how this is the best thing going and that we don't need to do false idol worship with pop stars and what's going on in the world. They can't do nothing for you. But God, I mean, God, I heard it on uh, kingdom speak and he said that God, um, it's presence everywhere, but he doesn't manifest himself everywhere. I want to be where God's manifested. Mm -hmm. And I want my daughter to see that and to see, you know, this is how we need to live for God. Like we pray together when we, when we eat, I, even if she's in her little thing, I hold her hand and my wife's and we pray over dinner. Um, when I walk in prayer, I'll, I'll keep her in my arms and pray with her. I, mm-hmm. I mean, speaking at tongues at home, like she, I constantly want her to be like, this is just normal. And when it, she's not around it, I want her to be like, well, something's off. Like, yes, I want church to be so instilled in her that everything else is just foreign and I don't want nothing to do with it. Like this is comfort. Kind of like what drew me back. There was always a comfort here. Mm -hmm. And so, but, um, I've, I've caught myself reading the word, trying to read the word more, pray more, um, and always do what you do here outside. Cause they're going to watch you. If you're at church, you act in a certain way and you're not acting that way out of church. Mm -hmm. They're going to pick up on that. I mean, she watches everything I do. So I better be the same out of church as I am in church. Well, you have that saying (laughs) monkey see monkey do. Exactly. And some people say, don't do as I, I say, do as, or don't do as I do, do as I say. I say. Yeah. And kids pick up on it, like you said, and that's powerful. Um, I'm like making a, 
being a role model for your children, showing them how to praise, how to worship, that this is life, that there's nothing outside of, there's nothing greater than living for God. And there is power in that. And that's awesome. I, I, I can see it. I see the, the drive. And that's what I wanted to, to understand was, um, and that kind of goes into one of the questions. You kind of already answered it, but what's that drive in you? Um, and it's amazing to see it each time. Yeah, it's just, um, and and the good thing about praising and worshiping God is he responds to that. Yeah. So if you give some, he's going to answer back. Whatever you give, he's going to answer back. And yeah. so that keeps you going too. That's a drive. But yeah, just living for God and want my daughter to live for God. Because, you know, I don't like what I did in the past. But with that being said, I have a different twist on parenting, I guess, because if you say, well, you don't know. No, I do know. I've been out there. I've done yeah. that. You you don't want this. Like, yeah. this is the best thing going. If I started here and did a full circle back to here, this is this is the best thing going. You don't need to go out and try things. I tried them. <laughs> Dead yeah. ends. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you've been there. You've seen it. Now you can teach her to, like, this is what you need to do. This is the, the right way to go, the right path, um, and you don't need to go out there and experience that. Yeah. You've experienced and that. especially now is way more wicked than yeah. when, you know, I was in high school. I couldn't imagine what kids are going through now. It's, it's yeah. sad. Yeah. Um, well that's, that's super exciting. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, anything else that you wanted to add, um, that God has done any miracles that God has done for you, any testimonies? Well, I will say like just living for God and having an impact on people around me. I remember when I really came back, uh, I used to go to this different Bible study, but uh, one of my buddies was in it, and I remember going to his house, and he was, like, wanting to drink a beer or something. And he's like, oh, you want one? I said, no, I don't drink beer no more, you know? And he kind it kind of clicked with me. He goes, yeah, what's the point of doing it? So he stopped drinking right there. So just living for God was, you know, worked on that. Yeah, yeah. But um, just when I committed myself to God and said, God, you know what? I'm not going to let this anxiety attack me like I'm going to yeah. go to church no matter what and just seeing God just lift it and yes. allow things because when I put him first he carried me through it Yeah, and I mean God never given up on me is just I've learned some I mean as far as miracles I, I've never hit, like healed anybody in front of me but I know God I when I hear testimonies I tell other people yeah. like hey you should come to my church oh so and so sick well hey this guy just got cured of cancer God can do it Yeah, but yeah. um just, just learn to be patient. I mean, God was super patient with me. Yeah. He could have left me many times. And uh, so seeing that and then I finally like, okay, Brian, you finally got it, finally clicked. Now it's time for you to like be patient with others. So when I'm praying for like my family who it's hard to get them to come and like my yeah. brother, he's like another thing I'm working on, but just being calm and praying around him. I mean, my brother used to be super angry all the time. Like we'd yeah. fight all the time. When I started to come back to church and learn how to pray and worship, like we'd go to work together. And I'd say, hey, we used to pray over this job. And just being that calmness and praying, I could really see it start to affect my brother, like get calm. And he'll start saying, hey, we should pray before this. So that I think is a miracle in itself. Like yeah. seeing how calm my brother's gotten just by me showing the light of God. Well, you're being that light. You're letting yeah. light, God's light shine through you. When you decided to give your all, to give everything, you had mentioned you listened to a message and it ignited that fire what changes did you notice in your life just start happening once you just like you know what i'm going to decide that this is what i'm going to do i'm going to give everything i have in every single service um well i quit uh quit with the movies watching movies video games uh just got rid of a bunch of stuff that i was like okay what's in my house that god wouldn't like um started praying more at home i remember like my wife uh, before she got pregnant, she was a nurse. And so she'd get up early. And sometimes if I didn't have work till later in the day, or if I was off that day, I would get up and I would, um, pray when she'd leave. So I'd have these early morning prayers and just seeing that and just my prayer life change. And, and when I come to church, not having this stigma of like, oh, okay, you know, cause you always want to raise your hands and clap, you know, when everyone's clapping, but there's got to be times when you got to be the one to lead the charge when you're like, Hey, I feel it. And, and, you know, people may be hesitant because there, you know, there's a lot of people, sometimes people yeah. want to worship, but they're hold back. But having that fire night in me, it's like, Hey, I'm okay to give God my all, whether 
I'm by myself down here, mm -hmm. or if there's a thousand people watching me, exactly. it's not for them, it's for God. Exactly. And so that perspective has changed that it's just, it's all about God. I mean, yeah. I just want to go deep. My prayer life has changed, even with my wife. I mean, I, I pray over her if she's sick, and we hold hands and pray, and, and just praying in our house, and just also just being a different leader, like living for God, I've seen how I need to treat my wife better, how to be a better father now, be a better brother and son, cousin, friend. I mean, just just being better. Yeah. Like that I just when you live for God, you want to be better. When you truly get it on you, I mean, yeah. it's in you. You you can't help but what can I do better for God? Yeah. And by being better for God, everybody else is going to reap the benefits. Yeah, you you said something that has always stuck with me as well. Um being a musician in the church, I've always my dad's always instilled in me to Every uh, he told me every time you play, you're playing for God's glory. You're not playing for your glory. No matter if there are a thousand people or if it's just you and God. And he had said that to me when you just said that. It just that's exciting to get that type of mentality of whatever I do, praising. Sometimes going up to the altar when no one's gone up yet, everyone's kind of waiting for the the kind of the crowd to go. Mm -hmm. But when you're feeling it, you get your miracle. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I don't care if I'm the only one who's going to be standing down here and everyone's like, man, I wonder what's going on with him. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. God knows. And God's saying, hey, he's responding. So I'm going to respond. He's getting his miracle. Oh, yeah. He's going to get it right now. Yeah. And I mean, that's the that's the attitude we have to have. I mean, yeah. even if it's not for me. Hey, God, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many times I've, I've travailed for people. Just God, do whatever you've got to do, save them. I remember uh, Pastor Joel McCoy, he's... Uh, He's in Port Arthur. He's my uncle's pastor um, in Texas. But he said that uh, his mom told him, son, I, I put you in God's hands, whatever he's got to do. I'd rather you go to heaven in a wheelchair than walk on hell on both feet. You know, that's the kind of prayer I want to bring for my lost family yeah. members, like my neighbors. I pray for my neighbors. I don't know if they've ever heard me. I'm in an apartment complex, but <laughs> I mean, I've invited tons of them to church and I'm always like, yeah, I'll help, hope you have a good day. Hey, we're having a church thing this Sunday. You know, you yeah. should come. And But I mean, yeah, it's whatever you've got to do. You just got to have that fervent prayer for people. Yeah. Well, continue to give your all. I know you're making an impact on many people. Um, like I said, every time I see, I'm like, wait, where's Brian? I don't, I don't see him up here. <laughs> um, you're giving your all. You're giving everything. And I know you're showing your, your daughter the same thing. And I know she's going to grow up with, like, I know what my dad did. I know what my mom did. I know the prayers that they prayed. I've heard the prayers that they prayed through when, I, when I've grown up. So keep on doing that. I, you know, you are uh, an influence. I know to many people, even though you may not see it. And I'm sure I know those prayers. I'm sure I know the prayers that you're praying for your neighbors, for your family are going to come to pass. And God's going to do it. Um, I know there are many stories of people that have prayed for years, their entire lifetime. And the prayers may not have come to when they were praying in, in their lifetime, but it happened. And God hears every single one of those prayers. Oh, yeah. So keep on strong. Um, I'm glad that you were able to hear your testimony. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being on. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, hopefully this can uh, help somebody else. I mean, we all have a special testimony, yes. but hopefully this uh, part can uh, strengthen somebody else and go out and testify. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to have, I want everyone I can have on here to share their testimony. It's important that we all hear our, each other's testimonies. Iron sharpeneth iron. So That's I know right. it's going to help somebody and I know it helped me. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited. I want to get that fire on uh, for God in my heart and spirit. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you.